So you want to beat your friends at air hockey. Maybe it's just for bragging rights. Maybe you want to bet them a beer. Whatever it is, I have three simple tips for you to do just that. All right, so this info is gonna to apply to mostly absolute beginners. So if you already know these, you're a step ahead. We'll do more of a deep dive on each of these topics individually in later videos, but these should begin to help you improve. So the first tip is gonna be how you grip your mallet. I did bring this up previously in my first video, but I wanted to bring it up again because it's essentially the most fundamental piece of advice I can give. If you don't change your grip style, you're gonna have a hard time progressing as a player. It's important that you hold your mallet with your fingers at the edge instead of by the knob at the top. This is gonna allow you to put more power behind your shots as your wrist can move a little bit more freely. Power is one important factor for holding the mallet correctly. If you're able to put more force on the puck, it's gonna move faster and it's gonna give the defense less time to react and block the shot. Then as you start to get more control and accuracy on your shots, you can introduce deception into your offense. One really good example is Jacob Weissman's shot release. Two of his best shots are the cut and the right wall under. These are considered complementary shots, ones that look the same at the time of release, but attack two different sides of the goal. There's several variations of these complementary shots, but we'll save those for a later video. You've probably seen people play air hockey like this. And to be fair, that's how a lot of the people in the world play. However, when you play like this, you're depending on luck to score on your opponent and to not score on yourself in the process. That's why there's memes like this about shooting own goals. There is a fix though, and it's called puck control. The first step in establishing puck control is gonna require some practice on your own. Move the puck around on your side of the table without shooting. This is gonna take some getting used to at first if you've never tried it, but as with anything else, the more you practice it, the more natural it'll become. Remember, we're past beginner grip at this point. Don't revert back to it when you're trying to establish that puck control. Next. Try hitting some shots to the opposite rails, near the goal. You're not trying to score here. The goal is to anticipate where the puck is moving, and that way you can gain control when the puck comes back to you. This will result in so many more possessions than when you were just swinging at the puck wildly every time it hit your side of the table, and hopefully less time scoring on yourself as well. We'll definitely talk about more offensive strategy in a future video, but putting together an offensive attack starts here with puck control. Last, but certainly not least, defense is a huge factor in being able to improve your game. Many times a newer player will keep their mallet all the way back at the goal, but as we can see, no matter where the mallet is placed, this creates huge gaps on both sides of the goal, where an offensive player with even decent accuracy can score pretty easily. Instead, you can try what's called the triangle defense, where the mallet is positioned slightly out from the goal. This will allow you to block straight shots more effectively by slightly adjusting the mallet between where the puck is and where your goal is and then you can react whenever you see a bank shot coming. It's also important to not slam your mallet back to the corners of the goal because this will leave you open to over the mallet bank shots. Instead, what you wanna do is pull back just enough to the point where the under the mallet bank shot has no more room to enter the goal, but you're still covering for the over as well in case that's what's actually coming. About 10 to 12 inches away from the goal is usually a good starting place, but you can adjust as needed. For instance, if your opponent is shooting nothing but straight shots, you can bring your mallet out just a little bit more to cut off that shot, making sure you stay between the puck and your own goal. And if your opponent's game is much more dependent on bank shots, then you can pull back towards the goal just a little bit in order to block those bank shots more effectively. Air hockey at a high level is all about those slight adjustments. That's all for now. Go out and try these methods to begin improving your game. And please, if you're able to win more games than you were last time, let me know in the comments. Cheers.